How many times have you asked yourself why, in life, you don't get what you want? How many times have you felt like your prayers were not being heard? And again, how many times have you even had the impression that the opposite of what you hoped would happen to you? Thanks to the Zen story you will hear now, you will discover that the universe speaks clearly to you, but you do not understand it. And you will understand that if you learn to communicate with the universe in the right way, you will start to get what you want. So make yourself comfortable because at the end of this story full of wisdom, you will discover what the five signs are that the universe is speaking to you. And you will know exactly how to behave so that things change and you can achieve your goals and the inner peace you seek. But before continuing, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. This way, you will be updated when we publish new content for your spiritual growth. The autumn sun filtered through the maple trees of the Zenrinji Temple, painting the smooth cobblestone path that led to the meditation pavilion red and gold. A gentle wind, like a breath of the universe, caressed the leaves, making their sighs resonate like an ancient mantra. Under the towering Jinko tree, whose fan-shaped leaves looked like hands reaching towards the sky, sat Master Kensho. The monk, with his deep eyes, sat in a lotus position surrounded by a group of pilgrims eager to receive his teachings. The air was filled with the scent of incense and the melodious sound of the stream flowing nearby, creating an atmosphere of peace and serenity. The pilgrims, coming from far away, had faced a long journey driven by a thirst for knowledge and the hope of finding answers to their deepest questions. Master began Sakura, a young woman with a curious and intelligent look. I have heard that the universe constantly speaks to us, but I can't decipher his language. How can I learn to listen to it and get what I want? Kensho smiled, his eyes rippling like the surface of a lake at sunset, reflecting the golden light of the setting sun. With a delicate gesture, he picked up a maple leaf from the ground, handing it to Sakura. Look at this leaf, he said in a calm, deep voice. It is fragile and delicate, but at the same time strong and resistant. It lived all spring and summer, feeding on sunlight and rainwater, and then transformed into this beautiful autumn color. Now, the wind is carrying her away, to a new, unknown destination. Sakura nodded, fascinated by the metaphor. The maple leaf, with its intricate grain and jagged edges, seemed to hold an ancient mystery. But what does this have to do with the universe? He asked, clutching the leaf between his fingers like a precious treasure. The maple leaf represents each of us, Kensho explained. We are all part of the universe, interconnected and constantly moving. The universe speaks to us through the signs that surround us, through our emotions, our dreams, and our intuitions. But we are often too distracted, too busy with our own thoughts and worries, to listen to his voice. A middle-aged man named Hiroshi spoke up, his face lined with lines of experience and fatigue. Master, I have tried to meditate and empty my mind, but I cannot find inner peace. How can I achieve emotional balance and mental well-being? And how can I, too, learn to listen to the universe? Kensho replied, Inner peace is not found by emptying the mind, but by accepting what the mind contains. Our emotions, both positive and negative, are like the waves of the sea. They come and go. They rise and fall. We can't control the waves but we can learn to ride them. And meditation helps us observe our emotions without judgment, understand their origin, and let them go. An elderly woman named Ayume raised her hand. Her eyes were clouded with deep sadness, like a sky covered in clouds. Master, I have lived a life full of hardship and loss. I lost my husband, my children are far away, and my health is poor. How can I find the motivation to keep going and find happiness? Kenshu approached Ayumi and took her hand, transmitting warmth and comfort. Suffering is part of life, he said gently, but it is not the only thing there is. 
Happiness is like a flower that blooms even among rocks. We must learn to cultivate gratitude for the little things, to find beauty in difficult moments, and to believe in our ability to overcome obstacles. Happiness is not a destination, but a journey. And like any journey, it is made up of ups and downs, moments of joy and pain. But even in pain, we can find the strength to move forward, to appreciate life, and to discover the beauty that surrounds us. The pilgrims listened attentively to Kensho's words, trying to absorb his wisdom as a sponge absorbs water. Their minds opened to new perspectives and their hearts filled with hope. But how can we know whether we are listening to the universe or whether we are simply victims of our own illusions? Sakura asked, a tone of doubt in her voice. Kensho smiled, the universe sends us clear signals when we are not aligned with its flow, he said, holding up five fingers to indicate that he would reveal these signals. The first sign, Kensho continued, is the feeling of being stuck, of not progressing in life. It is like a stream that stops flowing, whose waters become stagnant and putrid, losing their vitality and freshness. I remember a young doctor who came to me years ago tormented by the frustration of not being able to achieve his goals. He was a skilled and trained doctor, but he felt trapped in a life that didn't belong to him. I asked him to describe his typical day to me, and I realized that he was trapped in a rigid and monotonous routine, like a caged bird that has forgotten how to fly. I advised him to change his habits, to try new activities, to explore paths he had never traveled before. I encouraged him to follow his passion for music, which he had long abandoned to dedicate himself to a medical career. After some time, he came back to me with a radiant smile and eyes full of light. He had discovered a new purpose in life, playing his flute for sick children and bringing joy and comfort to their hearts. And he had learned that true happiness lies not in achieving external goals, but in following one's inner calling. The second sign, Kensho continued, is the repetition of negative patterns, such as toxic relationships or recurring failures. It's like a bird that keeps hitting the same window, not realizing that freedom is on the other side, just a wingtip away. Once, a woman named Akiko came to me in tears, desperate for yet another disappointment in love. She was an intelligent and sensitive woman, but she seemed to only attract selfish and manipulative men. I asked her to reflect on her past relationships and look for a common thread that united them. She discovered she was attracted to men who mirrored her absent father, a cold, detached man who had never given her the love and approval she needed. So she began a journey of therapy and learned to love herself recognize her worth and establish healthy boundaries in relationships. After a long and painful healing process, she met a kind and caring man who loved her for who she was. He had finally broken the cycle of suffering and found true love. The third sign, Kensho said, holding up three fingers, is a lack of synchronicity, such as missing lucky coincidences or feeling out of place. It's like a musician playing out of time out of tune with the orchestra of the universe. I remember a trader who told me that he had missed several profitable business opportunities, despite his efforts and experience. He was an ambitious and determined man, but it seemed that luck had turned against him. I advised him to pay attention to subtle signs, such as a chance encounter or a recurring dream. I invited him to meditate on his connection to the universe and ask for inner guidance. Shortly thereafter, he met an old friend who offered him a deal that changed his life. The trader realized that he had been ignoring the signs from the universe, focusing only on his material goals. He had learned to seize the opportunities that life offered him, opening himself to the synchronicity and magic of existence. The fourth sign, Kensho continued, is internal resistance, the feeling that something isn't right, even if we don't know what it is. It's like a seed that refuses to germinate, trapped in fear of the unknown. A young farmer named Kenji came to me with a deep sense of uneasiness. Even though he had a comfortable life and a loving family, 
he felt something was missing. It was as if an unfillable void had opened in his heart. I invited him to spend a period of retreat in the temple, away from the distractions of the world. During meditation, he realized that he had always wanted to become a poet, but he had repressed this passion for fear of disappointing his family's expectations. He abandoned his life in the fields and began writing verses that touched people's hearts. He had overcome resistance and found his true calling, realizing that happiness lies not in conforming to other people's expectations, but in following one's own path. Finally, Kensho concluded, raising another finger, there is illness, a sign that the body and mind are in disharmony. It is like a sick tree whose roots are no longer able to absorb nutrients from the earth, whose leaves wither and fall prematurely. Once, a woman named Fumiko came to me suffering from a chronic illness. She was a strong and independent woman, but the disease had made her fragile and vulnerable. I asked her to tell me her story and discovered that she had repressed her anger and grief over her husband's death for years. He had built a wall around his heart, refusing to face his emotions. She began a journey of healing, learning to express her emotions and forgive herself and others. He dedicated himself to meditation, yoga, and body care, and gradually his illness began to regress. He understood that the disease was a psychosomatic message from the universe, an invitation to take care of oneself and find balance between body, mind, and spirit. Kensho paused, letting his words ring in the air. The pilgrims remained silent, reflecting on the stories they had just heard. Some had tears in their eyes, Others nodded in understanding. These are just some of the signals that the universe sends us when we are not aligned with its flow, Kensho continued. But there are many other ways the universe speaks to us. It can be a book that falls off the shelf just at the moment we need it, or a phrase spoken by a stranger that strikes us deeply, a vivid dream that reveals a hidden truth to us. The important thing is to learn to pay attention recognize the signs and trust our intuition. Sakura raised her hand, her face lit with new awareness. Master, I understand now, he said. The universe constantly speaks to us, but we must learn to tune into its frequency. We must open our hearts and minds, let go of fears and resistance, and trust the journey that life offers us. Kensho smiled, satisfied. You're right, Sakura, he said. The universe is a wise and compassionate teacher, always ready to guide and support us. But we must be willing to listen to his voice and follow his teachings. Only then can we realize our full potential and live a life full of meaning and happiness.